the ways that you can support the podcast is by purchasing or picking up our limited edition apparel. The shirt that I have on right now is one of the only shirts that we brought back for a second time. Normally we'll never do that, but the only reason we brought this one back for a second time is it sold out within six hours. So we brought this one back. We also got a second one that we just dropped. It's our, I guess, just Halloween edition shirt. Go to leadfts.com or go to the link in the description. This really does help us out because this directly supports the Table Talk podcast. Thank you guys. Enjoy the show. Josh Bryant here at Elite FTS, and I want to talk to you today a little bit about a programming success. What makes a, you know, what makes you have success on a particular program? I always, we're not going to get into the specifics of what program that would be. So I think, you know, first off, I'm not trying to be one of these people that's going to come along here. And sometimes that you hear stuff nowadays, like, you know, all programs are the same if you just give the same effort and then like the same mindset. Obviously, I don't think that's true. I think there are plenty of bad programs. Just go on, you know, say on Amazon and look at a book from the late nineties or something. The person was, you know, famous for three months because they did something bizarre and no one got results. So there's plenty of bad programs. However, we'll say there's a lot of really good ones. There's a lot of good ones too. And an okay one with, you know, the right, right, right attack strategy is going to be better than a, than a good one with a, with a crappy strategy to go along with it. So number one, What's the most important thing to have success on a program? Okay, let's, we're gonna go, I'm sorry. We need to go with the, the, the basis here. The program is coherent. It's like semi, it's intelligent. It's at least semi-intelligently designed and there's nothing you know too crazy, okay? Number one would be adherence, okay? How well do you adhere to the program? So for example, if you're on some kind of bodybuilding split and um, you know, you hit legs every Friday, but like, you know, every Friday, you know, every, you know, Every other Friday, they give you a half day at work. So, you know, half the time you miss that. So it comes out you're missing 25% of your leg workouts because you only do it one day a week. That's going to be a problem. You're not adhering to the program because, I mean, anywhere you'd work, if you miss 25% of the days, you're going to get fired. So, you know, you're your training like that. So adherence is very important. So how do you get adherence? Adherence comes from the program being realistic and uh, being, you know, mentally simulating fun to a degree. Obviously, if you're training for the highest levels, sometimes it's not going to be the most fun and there's going to be some drudgery to it and stuff like that. But there's there's nothing wrong with a bit of some sort of novelty stimulus, keeping it fun, assuming it's not majorly compromising your goals. Like me personally, I'm not training for a competition. So I say I'd rather have it be 90% as effective, but I really love what I'm doing versus like maybe optimizing everything, but it's not as much fun because I'm not getting ready for a competition. So I'll take the 90% benefit and the huge mental stimulation. So adherence comes from being realistic. So what does realistic mean today to, to you? Okay, well, let's just say you're a high school football coach and right now we're in, the, we're in the midst of it. So you're working seven days a week, you're watching film every night, you know, you go to the, you know, you stay out late on Fridays, the game's far away. You have to, you know, maybe meet another coach. You, I guess they don't exchange game films anymore, but that kind of stuff where you're not sleeping right now and like right there. So you like to do like some twice a day you know, 50 cube program that, that gets like everything you do revolves around it would not be the best strategy for you right now. That's not realistic, but okay. Let's say you get laid off or let's say you don't have a job right now. And all of a sudden you're the, you know, you play your luck at the liquor store, buy a lotto ticket. You win 50 million. You don't have to do anything else except train. Then like training twice a day would probably be a really good option if that's all you want to do. So you have to look at what's realistic, you know, what's realistic for your situation, for how well you recovery, how much you're going to enjoy training, how much is going to, you know, deteriorate on your body type, all those type of things. Okay. Um, the, the next would be you think about results as a statistical trend. Okay. So there's a lot of people that are really gung ho to get into powerlifting. It's like, cause it's an adrenaline sport. Like I think nowadays because people are on phones and you know, everybody, everything's so safe and things like that. There's a lot of adrenaline junkies. So a good way to get, you know, um, a good way to, you know, fill, fulfill that is like getting under heavy weights that if you miss, it could really get you hurt. Obviously, you're getting that kind of, you know, adrenaline rush right there. So I understand the type of personality this sport attracts a lot of the times. And I think, you know, that, that's great. However, you got to think of it. You can't just base all of your success off of one single workout because it's, you know, if we're in a college class right now, they'd have, you know, statistics. So we look at the long term trend of something. So your results from training 
are from that long-term trend. They're not from one single outlier workout because you think about it, usually people go crazy if they have a bad workout. You know, training cycle's over. It's all been for nothing kind of blah, 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 blah. Okay, but, you know, that same person's probably not going to do that if they hit like a PR on bench or something. They're not like, I'm done training. I'm the best ever. You know, I'm just going to walk away from this. So you have to look at things realistically. And um, results are, a st- 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 excuse me, results are st- st- statistical trend, excuse me. I guess I drank too much coffee at Waffle House this morning. But um, so we want to balance enthusiasm with discipline and self-restraint and awareness. So we do want to be enthusiastic. I don't want you to lose that gung-ho personality, but you have to handle things with discipline and self-restraint. If you're supposed to go up to, you know, 405 for a double on bench, or you're supposed to go up to an RP9 on squat or whatever it is, you need to stay true to this. It's like, it's not, not every time you go in there, it's, you know, it, you're trying to demonstrate strength. A lot of times you're trying to build strength. And like, you know, the Charlie Francis used to talk about with sprinting, like the difference between 90% and 100% was like light years apart. A lot of that's a powerful thing too, is like sometimes like that, you know, that single to RP9, you can just walk outside right after and, you know, just go about your day. Where I've had squats at meets and things that like, you know, I've busted every blood vessel in my face. And I feel like, um you know, in a semi-drunken stupor for three weeks after because it was such a hard squat or deadlift. So you don't want to get to that point all the time in training because it's going to wreck you. So we want to be realistic with the time frame to your goals and your schedule. Okay, so fun, you know, think about your program. Is this fun? Is this enjoyable? Is it something you can do long-term? So we want to find a style that you like that's individually suited to you. And there are some people that do better with like those Chico kind of programs and things like that where it's more of like just doing the same thing over and over a ton of submaximal volume, high frequency, because that fits their personality. It's a whole other conversation, but you need to find something that fits you in your lifestyle. And is this fun? Is this enjoyable and getting you the results you want? So if you adhere to the program, you know, make sure it's in line with your lifestyle, take care of your nutrition, your sleep and things like that. But adhering to that program and making sure it's the right type for you is the number one, you know, is the best way to get success in your programming. This is Dave Tate from Elite FTS. Last year, we partnered with Ken Kanak and to co-host the Swiss Symposium. It's built on hypertrophy and sport medicine for strength athletes and practitioners to come together in one place, which will be the Columbus Hilton at Easton. You are going to learn how to level up your training based upon the success and failures of others. You have to stay on top of your game if you want to be to make the success and move forward at the pace that you want. Just to name a few of the presenters that will be presenting, we're going to have Matt Winning, Brian Carroll, Eric Serrano, Jim Wendler. That's just a few. These experts will be presenting on low back injury and prevention, exercise selection, as well as a business steroid recovery and restoration panel. If you want to network with one of the experts that we have presenting, we're going to have people there to be able to help you do that. To register for the Swiss Symposium, go to the EliteFTS.com website, look for the banner on the homepage, click that, and we'll see you there.